welcome. Uh, AI tool tax. AMA, we started April last year. It's nearly one year uh, when AI was just a buzzword and uh, we, we just started to build some momentum and the rest is history. Now nobody wants to do, um, you know, this is where we started. Every Thursday we got together. October 3rd was the last one before I headed up to Himalayas uh, for my little hike and came back and there was a shock waiting for me and still continued. So I still haven't recorded the journey yet, but I'm there. So if you're new, as I mentioned, now a lot of all the previous videos, AI videos have been uploaded in our Batches Global YouTube channel. Please do go and have a look um, and um, let me know. So, so what that meant is we won't be covering any basics, principles, etc. So we'll be jumping straight into slightly more technical thing of, you know what, how am I going to, what is this language model? What's this generative AI, you know, or how can I pick and choose? There's a lot of sponsored webinars. There's a lot of tools, um, you know, left, right, center, you know, what, where do I start? You know, I use, I use ChatGPT, I use Claude, I use Bing Search, for example. I hope you do. If you do, you're already doing amazingly well. Anything more is a bonus. So, you know, you, we are not going to talk about the future of bid writing, AI writer versus human writer. Important point here is AI upskilling is a mandatory it's absolutely mandatory. It's not just for proposal writers. It's for anybody and everybody within the business. AI is now doing spreadsheet analysis. AI is using law things. AI is using financials, investments. AI is using uh, data analytics, dashboards, operational improvement. It's anywhere and everywhere. So in general, anybody uh, who's at the adulthood age, between 18 all the way to retirement age, 60 or even 55, AI upskilling is an absolute must. You know, we, we are going to launch a suite of products, including AI Python writing, AI data analytics, et cetera, which, which I'll come back to, not just proposal related things. We are going to go deeper on that as well. But today is, is a comeback webinar. So I've included slightly more technical content, but I, it's a hard stop for me, but we'll just go with that. So primarily, uh, once the data get uploaded in YouTube, uh, we also uh, do the audio version of that in if you don't want to see me <laughs> obviously you can listen to me in the audio version and that's just to be talk teaching um you know which which again you know again we haven't published uh, um, recently but we, we will i will be doing more of this in the coming months so because i saw in in this five six months anything interesting has happened to be honest i didn't find much so scribble talk teaching is there subscribe to if you are using anything the ai scoop newsletter at the moment this is this is where we left 2002 and 5 uh, it's now nearly 2600 but obviously we have been quiet but we are getting back to it all the webinars are there in this YouTube. And, uh, you know, this 136, there are a lot more corporate uh, training that we did for Deloitte, for McKinsey, for you know, all the IBMs, you know, Accenture, you name it, all the tech companies, you know, they invested on training. And individually, uh, there was also people. So, so we are still keeping the same format, which I'll touch at the very end. Uh, but corporate training is also underway. 3.30, but I would like to see this moving to at least 3.40 today, <laughs> if you can, please. So what has happened? A uh, very, very quick uh, snapshot. Um, I'll just quickly run through this before we get into the subject. So AI news is important. It's, it's important to um, to be part of this. So Copilot is one. Ha, thank you, Alessia. Well done. So it's of 3.36 then. then. <laughs> so thank you. So Microsoft Copilot, obviously, you know, both Microsoft Copilot, you know, it's, it's now available to all the users. Previously, it was available only to enterprise. Now you can sit and play. How you could take a slide, which I've done, convert into Word in split second. How you could take a spreadsheet and make it automatically think, hey, I have this spreadsheet. Uh, I don't know what the spreadsheet says. Now you can ask it, hey, what are the interesting insights you have from the spreadsheet? It will automatically do the sum, average, you name it, you name it. So, you, you know, financial analysts or data analysts or research analysts, et cetera, you know, it and it like how uh, you know the AI writing tools breaks that initial barrier of uh, fast writing. You can also use Copilot. So Copilot available to all users. Uh, play with it. You know, if the next week uh, or next time when we get together, I'll go deeper on that. Um, 
obviously uh, you know google is trying to keep up his position with uh, with searches so, with the, so all the ad campaigns now also have generative ai features you know so biggest thing is will search exist you know search will continue to exist at uh, the seo many of the websites seo optimization all it's all done it's initially you know google tried to park i mean like if it, if, if it's an ai written content it won't be listed they were working so hard trying to uh, screen whether it's AI or you, AI or human written content, and then they just gave up. Now they have just, uh, you know, any, any content. What that meant is uh, anybody can write amazing content if they know how to optimize the content, and which meant if you are a content writer, blog writer, copywriter, it's going to be tough. At the same time, uh, and it's also very interesting. Now anybody can, can do it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll come to that. I'll come to that. So... So again, uh, you know, if, if you're a plus user, they, there are the, the features are improving. Uh, meta is good. What you do, what you might not realize is you might be thinking, hey, what's Facebook doing in this year? Facebook is the world's largest open source LLM, which meant if you don't want to use pay money for uh, chat GPT or if you don't want to pay money for Claude, Anthropic Claude, uh, Meta. So many, many research institutes uh, are using llama 70b is the 70 is is the parameter 70 billion uh, data points within it um again um you know i would be taking this with a pinch of salt uh, primarily germany pro is uh, is beating up gpt4 turbo Claude is beating GPT-4, etc obviously we will talk about how to evaluate the language models in a bit you know at every level it's there you need to understand okay on what does it outperform specifically in what you know that's the thing because um, different tools have different uh, different usages and it's important for us to understand again so far we have only seen uh, text to text so you you have a engine and uh, you, or you have an image generation you have a text to text now you are getting text to video right so uh, primarily so what's next um oh, victoria welcome thank you nice to see you. so um uh, so uh, Google now has a memory in in a way uh, like okay let's uh, let's okay I'll, I'll I'll do that as a demonstration at the very end I'd use, otherwise you know we might be losing time so DeepMind as you know um, and it used to be a separate company it's it was bought out by Google um, so primarily what that meant is um, they are uh, investing a lot more like it's like a spin out okay it's open a Microsoft company or or not a Microsoft company um, it is a Microsoft company. Not really. It's an independent company. It's it's similar. It's DeepMind a separate company or a Google, and you know, it's it's something like this. Um, yeah. So obviously, um, you know, uh, if if in the text uh, you are you're going to find a lot of different fonts, you're going to find a different formatting as well. Which meant I only did it today morning because I look at it uh, the latest update and I do it and it and look at the users or the attendees and I decide what content we need to do. Obviously, what that meant is it's not like a nicely polished formatted slide. It's not. And the rest of it, I'm, I'm just leading it. You know, Midjourney, as you know, um, you know, they have improved a lot of Midjourney. So we had a Midjourney course. It's it's available in YouTube channel. You can go and watch it. But important thing is it generates. It was already faster, but they have made it even more faster. Um, again, if you if you have the app, uh, you can have ChatGPT in the app, uh, Plod in the app, Perplexity, which I use extensively also in the app. And you can just go from there. So um, uh, primarily, um, that figure zero one. Um, is a typo, uh, well, let's see, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to the human doing the AI slides. It's, so it's a typo. So OpenAI can now have full conversation with people. What that meant is if you have used Pi, if you use Pi.ai, um, you know, at some point, you know, Pi was my therapist. You know, Pi is an emotional bot, emotional intelligent text bot. So, uh, you know, people talk about mental health and stuff, but Pi is super smart. Again, I think I touched it in one of the webinar. If you, if you want to go deeper into, okay, you know what, I uh, I need to make a decision in life. I need to, I'm going through the stress with my line manager. My children are not listening to me, anything. If you don't want to talk to somebody, I know this is scary. A Pi will be a good friend. You know, that's the thing. So prime, what it, what a time to help with this. You know, now uh, if you, um, you know, the, the text responses that used to come from these text-based tools used to be dry. Uh, but now I think uh, now you can have full conversation with you in a way that you wanted. Uh, that's it. So again, you know, one by one, a co-pilot, uh, definitely that will be the next big talk, April 18th. If you are free, just come over. 
and there are a lot of tools guys anybody can take the api from any of the llms that we're talking about generative ai tools and create a, a new tool right and you're going to find a lot of tools uh, that's coming fast and they're going to go bust as fast as possible as well three years from now any tools that are talking about proposal writing ai etc write it uh, in your hand it's going to be pretty challenging for them to keep it because by the time the wider companies like the Google, Anthropic, you know, even NVIDIA and uh, Microsoft, et cetera, will be, will be, it will be much, much common and, and so used for us to just uh, develop these things. So, so uh, some of the tools, I think there's never ending, uh, there's never ending tools coming up, but again, as a responsibility to share with it, just play. Uh, many of these tools, we, we, we touched it, but they are evolving, doing more and more of this. Vertune, we use it all the time. Um, Slides AI, we tried, but we left it. Tome is good, but it's very it, it it's very slick, uh, but just use where it can. Hyper high hypo truth. <laughs> it's we tried it, but I mean, like you, you just need to play with it. And and there is one other tool I forgot to mention here. I'll find it at the very end and I'll share. Uh, that tool is amazing. If you if you if you write an article. Or, or if you want to write an article, you just you just write a word and it automatically thinks about it. It automatically search, searches in Google and say, uh, what are people talking about that particular keyword? And then it just constructs your headline, one headline, two headline, three, exactly in the way um, the, uh, the, the people are searching online based on the SEO under, which means rather than to sit and think, I am going to write an SEO optimized article, it automatically does those things for you. So. Let's get in. Um, you know, it's going to get slightly technical. Just, uh, just bear with me. Um, I'll, I'll run as fast as possible. Language model. Um, you know, it, it stopped at hard stop at twenty two because that's where October twenty twenty two three point five launched and everything changed after that. But after that, what happened? You just need to think. Moore's law applies. And Moore's law, as you know, an American engineer started uh, look at the chip in. Um, in, in the transistor and say, hey, you know what? Uh, it's, 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 you know, the number of transistors per silicon chip will double every year. You know, that's what Intel and other chip makers use it to make and they continue to work towards it. But the new Moore's law for LLMs is just approximately eightfold increase. I mean, like with the parameters. Parameters are like the number of learnings that it does. So you will find, for example, um, um, lambda, which is a meta's one, is 80 billion parameters. 80 billion parameters is, you know, it, it, it has crunched 80 billion different words of information with it. And they say that that thing uh, will, will continue to increase more and more because many, many companies are now deciding, hey, you know what? Um, this is all the stuff we have. Let it be used. So, and also these people are finding more and more. So that amount of information that this, the memory that uh, Alessia asked about, will be continuing to increase like the chip memory the llm's memory is also going to increase massively that begs the question okay what's this generative ai thing that people talk about and what's this llm thing they talk about in very very simple terms um, um generative ai as the word says ai is a sub form of artificial intelligence which was was a long time people used to call it machine learning in the past where you just have something uh, and you want a machine to learn for example if you want a robot to uh, to go and serve the food uh, to the people instead of human you just uh, take that robot and you train the robot into the ways of working and then it just go you know I know some people are here, such as here, for example, the robotic process automation, other things actually, you know, it was there three, four years. But what's happened with the whole machine learning thing now at the chat GPT is it's now been applied into much more um, in the text thing. And that, that's the whole thing that started. So primarily, if the AI can um, can use the same machine learning thing, but they can automate the content creation and that became your generative AI, right? So to do that automation for content creation, you need to have content. So there are two ways of content. One is your own content and the second one is content readily available in the public domain. So that's why the market is split into two, which is what we call demand or the, or the LLMs. Um, I won't even call it LLMs, which is like, you just pump a content, specific content uh, to it, and then you use the AI to, to train and apply uh, the responses based on only your uh, specific corporate content or your user content. The other one is 
I don't have any specific user content. I'm going to use what's generally available in the public domain, use the available LLMs, and I'm going to generate responses, first draft responses. That's how the Claude's and the, and the new uh, Gemini or the previous BARD and the chat GPT, et cetera, came out with. So understand there are two different things. So as is mentioned here, 3.5 was the base model uh, that was launched and then everything fall in place. If that's the base model for text, then there is also a based model for images. And there is a base model, which is a sonar that they're going to come out with for the videos. Right? And then there are a lot of people who plug into this thing, that's the API, and through that, they are doing their own thing. We will, we will, we will layer one by. So generative AI is nothing but the machine learning for content, and the content that you're going to do is the language model. Are we clear? Shall I bolt on more? Okay. So now, uh, domain our generative AI is, 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 is the one that I just talked about. Domain are tailored specifically for industries or functions. So you have marketing specific ones, you have a, a text specific, because people say, hey, this is proposal writing AI tool. I've, I've included one, which has been sponsoring a lot these days, I've included. So um, obviously I'm, I'm not a great fan of those things, but I, I, it's as an example, let's just go with that. So primarily you can see here, the GAN model, uh, that was the base version that DALI was based, uh, uses image so if if you want to you need to choose the ai tool specifically right either you need to choose it by function which is like hey this is proposal writing thing or you could choose by industry sometimes what happens is okay you know this uh, the ai is specifically good for writing but it's pretty crap because it's um it's is it's not connected to the industry that i'm following which is healthcare or law or anything but there are some llms which is not a writing tool, but it has all the content for law or healthcare, which one would you choose? That's the dilemma. So don't fall on the trap. Oh, this is the proposal writing AI. It's amazing. It's going to be applicable to any industry, every industry. No, 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 no. So, um, so primarily, you know, you, you have one of those things, which is, yeah, what these guys do here is obviously yeah. they take yeah. your specific content. It's a writing tool. They take your specific content, uh, they put their AI inside, and then when any questions you ask about your specific content, it just churns up. That's why they recently went on and said, hey, uh, we put a box inside and the box answers it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's there, it's there before it will be, you know, it's, it's, it's the simplest form of working with it, you know? So uh, is, is that not the proposal automation that existed from 1989? <laughs> What's new in it, right? So you, you have a content and you ask questions about the content, but here, you know, it, it also added a little bit. It's, it's just an incremental improvement of what we have, right? So what do you, what you need to learn here is any AI proposal writing tool, they all leverage, will be powered by one of the language models like the GPT-4, which is OpenAI, or the Llama, which is the, which is the um, what's it called, Facebook's version, or Falcon, this is the Anthropic Cloud version. So you need to be very, very clear. Don't just say, okay, this is a proposal writing tool, this is a proposal automation tool, et cetera. What are they powered by? They are powered by that. Then they'll just come, gonna come back and tell you, hey, our security is clear. We got this certification, that certification, da 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 do do do. It's all great. You know, that certification is for the infrastructure. <laughs> It's for the infrastructure that it's hosted. It's for security for the infrastructure, not the security for the content. Be very, very clear. Nobody will tell you, oh, it's foolproof. Because they, they use this high level word to just give you that, okay, it's, uh, it's compliant, it's this, it's that, I've got the, but that's for the infrastructure, not for the content. So anyway, but the, the security comes from these guys these guys so because you're simply plugged in an api to just do it so what are these open source lms that uh, okay your your it team is looking into you you went to your it team and then asking you know what everybody is talking about ai you know and that company is actually implementing ai my ceo is forcing me to just improve my volume of bits three times because ai can write it what are you doing so you just think oh my god i need to do something so step one is uh, okay, um, you know, understand what are the open source LLMs, open source LLMs, which is like these people are keep on adding content to content to content, you know, so they're building their database, they're building their parameters as they call it. And then they just say, okay, take it, you know, Llama 2, 
you know, developed by Meta High. Here is a twist. It's also backed by Microsoft. <laughs> so when Microsoft invests on open source LLM, it also invests on custom LLM, which is open AI. So the reason being, they want to be anywhere and everywhere, right? This is where Apple missed the boat completely. So, and now they are trying to catch up on it. So they are looking at uh, some simple LLMs uh, where, where they could develop on their own. So Falcon, it's based on, uh, you know, Falcon is coming out. It's it's very, very good. You know, it's uh, uh, it's developed by uh, UAE. And then uh, it's, it's now being extensively used in the Middle East. Anybody heard of that? Um, I have, I, I've, I've, I've used Llama, Llama 2. Uh, Falcon, we used it just for one Middle East uh, client who insisted we have to use it, but that's just specific for them. But Lama is amazing, amazing. Um, so Gemma, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's all these, uh, all these names. Either way, there are open. So these are top open source LLMs. Simply, you can go download the code, and you already have it, right? Then you need to have an AI Python developer, just one or two person, and you simply need to know, okay, I have this raw data now, which is the LLM. Now you just need to apply the AI to that LLM. You just need, hey, can you take that code? Can you take all the data? And you just simply do it. And there are enough tools that, that helps you to do it. Or you could have an AI Python developer and you could configure it for your own use. That becomes your own tool. But the drawback, uh, with it is, uh, you know, we, we'll touch uh, the plus and minus of it. Again, uh, Minstrel is another one. It depends on uh, what you're doing. And finally, Mosaic. Mosaic is, is good for long-form content. So interestingly, for proposal, this is a great tool. Mosaic LLM. So um, this one, you all will be familiar, proprietary LLMs, GPT-4. Obviously, now it's regarded as the gold standard, uh, but obviously Anthropic, Claude is a good one, but it's based on Palm. So if, if the important thing which I suggest you do here is when you go to ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude, go back and see the drop-down menu of what they actually do. What does it say? Opus, for example, Claude says Opus. Opus is, is kind of balance between uh, reliability and speed. You will find the same thing um, in ChatGPT Plus as well. You know, what are they know you, you can only use it, even though you're a Plus customer, you can only use it for a certain time. After that, it just says, hey, you can't. Because why? It's resource intensive. It's expensive. So that's why, um, you know, there are a lot of people who will be coming back and telling it's AI powered, AI powered but they need to get a lot of funding to keep it going. Uh, and, and and then end of the day, it becomes a big boys, big girls game. And that's where it, it's going to fall. That's where you have New India, DeepMind, you know, and then OpenAI. It, it just goes back and uh, it's it just going to sit with there. Anybody, they're going to use the API and they're just going to go from there. These are what we call the proprietary LLMs. Proprietary LLM is okay. These guys have configured their own LLM. They take their own infrastructure from here and they created a tool called ChatGPT. Do you understand? So they used the GPT algorithm uh, from their own LLM and they created uh, ChatGPT. Similarly, um, the Palm was used by Claude, by Anthropic, and they formed Claude 3, Opus, Sonnet, Heiko. It's all different things. So you, you, you can do the same thing. You can go back and buy this or this, and you could call yourself Vasca, Alessia, Sachin, Hazel, Lorna, anything. You can charge, you can do it. But the important point here is um, you just need to know that there'll be cost, cost per parameter. You know, that's what breaks you. So I, the, the second example is, you know, if you found recently one of the consulting companies have said, hey, you know, we are going to work with these guys. If you go back and read uh, what they actually do, they just simply use the API. They just got the um, they just got the GPT-4 Turbo, which is nothing but this one. Yeah, they took a proprietary LLM. They paid money. They just they just add then uh, you know supposedly um, yes, it's the most advanced LLM. Why? Because the LLM, if if the, if if you go back and uh, there are there's a third version where you can actually go back to the source. There are lots of free sources and you could create your own language model, which is custom language model. The problem with that is you have to keep adding, keep adding. So there are layers to it. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you just before Easter. Uh, stay with me. So proprietary LLMs meant like, you know what? Uh, they already have done the hard work for you. They already have the LLMs. They already have the AI thing. You simply plug in the a API, and then you, if you want to add your own content, that's what they say. 
this is included. <laughs> this is inside. And then you just come back and say, hey, you know what? So this tool combines Azure OpenAI, which is nothing but OpenAI, and Azure platform, which is Microsoft platform. And then you say, okay, we are using Microsoft infrastructure and we are using OpenAI's tool and we have created this. This is like a three-week project and it will cost you $15,000, max $30,000. Uh, if you want to do it a little bit to compress you and that's it, your tool is done. Then you can go back and license it out to just do, you know, this is inside, that's inside, etc. But to be honest, is does it, does it really make a big difference? This is inside and that's the thing which I want you to test. So, um, uh, okay, let me let me let me do that quickly. So uh, these are the parameters that we're talking about. If 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 you're looking at okay, now I'm confused. You know, just tell me one thing. Which one should I have to use? I will never do that uh, because it is totally based on. You know, we are not doing any sponsored webinar, so we are going to do any hackathon uh, to just tell you this are the different automation that we are going to do. We are, I'm here to give you an open picture. You decide uh, what's the right thing for you. So primarily, Llama, open source, very, very popular, very, very used, to, you know, backed by this. Falcon is another one. Um, you know, it's backed by Anthropic. It's also backed by the, you know, Middle East, very, very popular, 100%, you know. But look at the parameters, 70B and 40B. Um, and you can see it's the most affordable, you know. Llama is the most affordable, and this is more clever, very, very clever. Uh, Cohere and the other ones, obviously, there are, they haven't explicitly went back and add parameters, but it's the GPT 3.5. Um, they say it's 30, you know, 40 billion parameters, but then it's increased more. And this is where you want to be very careful. Pricing starting at dollar 0 0.02 per thousand tokens, approximately 750 bucks. That's where you find uh, tools like... Uh, um, uh, oh my God, the, the marketing copy tools, if you're using anything, they are going to tell you, you have to pay, you can pay up to 25,000 words, it's $99, you know, or if uh, have is anybody using those kind of tools? It's based on this because those guys have used an API, they simply went and plugged themselves with one of these LLMs, created a different name, and they're just coming in because their function is marketing. They have taken this, they are using a function as marketing and they're they are gonna charge with you. This is why any proposal writing tool is gonna to come to you and say, um, we are gonna charge you $1,000 a month, or we are gonna charge you by the words that you write, or we are gonna charge you by the user you're gonna write, you know, because they're burning. This tokens meant like they have to go to this GPUs, which is where um, like the processing speed and they are gonna burn cash on that. So just be careful because the cost per word will be there. So, you know, that's the reason it's, it gets stopped. It's not, so if, you, know, you can't use it until 3 p.m. Baska because you only have eight things, eight more searches left. You know, that's what the chat GPT says. Because you have, a, you know, even though they gave you $20 a month, they just don't want you to do more and more because, hey, guys, you're only paying $20, but I'm already burning a lot more. That's why per day, these guys are losing millions, millions, because they're backed by heavy investors. They are still running. The key factors, uh, why are you using it? Your intended use case, you know, you know, is, is it going to be for translation content, et cetera, data domain? You think carefully what, what you're going to There are even, uh, you know, federal-based databases from the old tenders and stuff that's are gradually coming up to the market. Um, yeah, you know, if you go by domain or if you go by use case, or, and as I mentioned, you know, the, the LLM that you're going to choose, the tools, for example, Opus in Cloud or Plus in uh, in ChatGPT, it's like a balance. It's a good accuracy, good reliability, whereas some things will be very fast. You need to think about that. Inference and other things, these are behind uh, these are behind the scenes, and and it just keeps going. Cloud versus on premise. Decide you know if are you going to use a cloud API. This is where your Microsoft. This is where uh, what Amazon. You might think, oh, where is Amazon and all these things. Amazon quietly goes back and talks to all these uh, custom you know, free uh, LLMs, or not free LLMs, open source LLMs. They all are hosted in Amazon. You know, so Amazon is the largest hosting provider for all the LLMs in the world. And you might think, where is Amazon? They are not here. Google is minting it. Um, and if you're not, if, and if you're not aware of open source, then you might be thinking, where has Facebook lost it? No, they're all are having a role on this. They are just sitting and doing this. Uh, then comes the budget. Compute usages, you just need to know. And it's very easy to say we are going to do 10 bits. Today, they might say it's $1,000 per month because you are entering. 
but watch the cost to rise three times, five times, 10 times, then you might be thinking, you know what? I'm going to let go of the AI and I'm going to do it myself. That way will come up. It's, it's now a, a, a early adopters, as you think, as the cost of the things you might think, okay, the price of the transistor comes down because the adoption is here. But in this case, uh, not sure. Not sure. That's why people are investing more on their own chip making because Nav India is now it's, it's like N V I D I A. Um, you know they 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 are they are the largest GPU provider and it's considerably increasing. So I'm I'm not going to repeat it. This is um, and the technical side there are a lot of performance. Again, the tool that you are buying, you know whatever the tool that's sponsored that's been projected to you. They all are an API based tool behind somebody else. It could be a cloud or a thing. And those things are extensively researched by research institute and they rank them. As you could find a lot of research papers. I don't know, go back and search for how to how the, the performance of the last language models. And you're going to find these guys have different scores. You can just, and that changes, you know, if as I said, that's where you see the performance of uh, Gemini is amazing compared to this. It's because they have updated uh, Gemini now and the cloud or Anthropic is, is outdated by three months. Now they will update it and the scores keep changing, but it's a, it's, it's a big game. So API based, so finally, just to close it before we, uh, before I go to the other sections, API based LLMs, you know, like what we know, it's good because you're, you're going to get a good quality response. Uh, if you are just using it low usages, um, you know, within your company, which is like smaller companies and stuff, twenty dollars per month would be much more enough. Or if you want to use the enterprise version within Anthropic or Claude, sorry, Anthropic or ChatGPT, you can configure with that, and we can still use that. Low usage is fine, but when we are using hundreds of bits, global organizations, that's where they are. They are building their own LLMs they are customizing and building their own thing because it's not worth it for them because they are bleeding a lot of costs. So they are going to use for a one-off ex ex expensive effort, but their ongoing cost will be low because they are configuring according to their own thing. Otherwise, uh, use LLM-based tools. Um, the, the thing is, this is where, the, as I mentioned, while they say it's secure, it's compliant, we have all the certificates, that's all for infrastructure. It's all for infrastructure. So, you know, nobody, you know, so when 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 people are scrutinizing open AI for all the sensitive thingy, uh, you need to remember anybody who are using those things will also be, you know, also need to be questioned for, hey, it's all great. You have all the certification, but tell me where my data is stored. Tell me where it's going to be done, et cetera. You know, just get to the bottom of it. Um, becomes more expensive over time with request volume and more or less because you are already configuring the, your uh, your own knowledge based on this, you're pretty much locked in with them. You know, do you want to be locked in with them? Yes, it's good early adopters locked in with them. Um, you know, that's it. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is another interesting thing that's coming up, which is like, um, uh, you know, what's stopping them from... Uh, from going white labeling your content and doing that, right? So that's it. And this is... It's pretty transparent because it's already there. Um, you know, and if you're using high volumes, it's there. Uh, can be fine-tuned to perform better than the GPT series with Llama as, as a given as an example. Uh, flexibility, you know, if if your company is hundred percent focused on you know government projects, this is a good way to go for uh, full control over data privacy, security, and stuff. But there is a one-off cost, you know, large upfront one-off cost. Model quality may be lower. Uh, than the commercial offerings. That doesn't matter because your, your thing is protected and you, you could continue to improve it going forward. Again, as I mentioned, you might need to have AI developing team. You know, if you have a large IT function, let's just go with that. Some of these things there is, because there is it's not a gray area between API-based LLMs and open source LLM. This is where Copilot comes in. This is where Google's integration other tools also come in, which means, hey, uh, you we, whether you use the API based LLM or you use uh, custom based LLM, uh, your your back engine on Google tools and Microsoft tools will already be connected to it. Which means whatever you are typing in Microsoft Word or a spreadsheet, um, is that your data or is it Microsoft data? You know, even though you are not using any AI, it's uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be there. But that's where they are moving in. So again, as I mentioned, do you know this is inside? Uh, I just want you to test it. I just want you to not go blind and say just because this is inside. I mean, like, 
there are all these are best practices remember best practices is not ip for one company one things it all started it evolved and people fine-tuned it you know it, it just comes back and uh, that's going to be always a question uh, where you know just because i want to work on this process i want to work on this framework should i have to buy this tool then you're going to get the same out whole point of AI is for you to go think out of box and try to come out with out of box answers. If you're going to use the same frameworks that's been developed in the 1980s, 1990s with an outdated syllabus 2015 for the certification and stuff, then you're going to get the same outdated responses. This time is not written by human, but written by AI, right? But please test it yourself. Test it yourself, which is, okay, you know, what other frameworks are there? This framework that they are talking is only available in this tool. Oh, is it sure? Is it not available there? You know, just, just go for it. Because somewhere down the line, remember, every company has a website. Every company shares X, Y, Z, etc. So if it's, if, 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 which meant, you know, even behind the paywall, behind it, there are tools that can go and crack those things. And these guys have spent billions and billions on this. So first go and test what it can do. So I'm just going to take a small break uh, because I've been talking. Um, and we are going to do a quick poll, uh, you know, just to see where we are. Let me see whether I could actually launch the poll. Bear with me one second. And so welcome to thanks for the poll. Obviously, you know, some are considering active implementation of AI, some, you know, what I'm just going to sit and wait. You know what? There's nothing wrong with it because I will share you one or two case studies of how it all went wrong for people. Um, because uh, their CEO decided, hey, you know what? Everybody is talking about AI. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just told these guys to come and do AI for us. And then with no different thing, just because some senior stakeholder decided want to be cool. Um, uh, to to just say that we are AI powered, we are AI implementing, etc. It just comes up. So what you need to know is uh, prompt engineering, which you know, you know, it's uh, my school of thought is there are a lot of people who who tell you these are the hundred prompts you need to do. These are the prompt thing you can find in YouTube our YouTube about prompt. Um, you know, it's there. But what's prompt? You know, you you, you have to add some text to interact with the language model and to just get an output. And that interaction is very personal to you. And that interaction means what you want to get it. So that's prompt engineering. It, the reason it's called engineering is because you need to engineer the result, right? So you need to continually test the model response differently. And you as a prompt engineer need to remove a lot of bias on it and you can just go for it, go for it, go for it. So if I'm going to come back and say, you know, this is how you need to go for, uh, and if that's the one way forward, it's not. So I'm not a great fan of this, but you need to work through your own prompts, act as this person, work in this tone, create this result in this format, in this words. Now, okay, this is great. Make it in a professional tone, make it authoritative, ensure this covers these, this, this industry and you just keep doing. So fine tuning, you know, obviously th this is just a simple thing. This because a continuation of LLM. So I'll just quickly wrap this through. Um, so LLM. I know you, you, now you've got a content, whether you have your own content or whether you are going to have a content that's generated by um, by an LLM, you are just going to fine tune it, right? Fine tuning is a process of optimizing language engines. That's your LLM. So it just takes, um, you know, your, your, your content or or it's it just uh, this is where you are pumping in your company specific information into this. So the reason I'm adding this, I'm layering a process of if you're implementing, how you're going to implement it. First, with whatever the tool that you have, the bare basic tool, like how we train you in our AI right course, you just need to work with any LLM because everybody who's going to come and sell you is going to use one of those LLMs to power their tools. So first you need to know how to interact with the LLM. Then you pump in your own content, which you can also pump in. Like how we do here, you upload the content, engage, and you generate. Whether you are going to use any LLM, you can use it for $20 a month, or you can spend $1,000 a month, or you're going to spend $150,000, $300,000, just because you want. this is the process. You want to engage with your LLM, you upload your content, and you engage, and then you continue to generate the output, All right? So important thing is you just try to understand your tone of voice. So uh, searches differ. Again, there's, this is where you find uh, automation, proposal automation tools, or now AI automation tools. End of the day, it's the same. 
uh, you are going to search. When you give a prompt, what it does is it's searching information. And in this case, what you're going to search is this optimized search. This is your Google search. And then this is your Bing search, which is AI. And this is your totally optimized search within your LLM. There are th th three different searches. And primarily, this is the three-step process that work through, which is behind the scenes. This is directly from OpenAI, which is, OK, uh, you have got the output now, so how, we, how we are going to fine tune it, how we are going to pump back the rewards within the model, and how we are going to reinforce the learning. Again, these things are automatically done within your LLMs. But if it's AI, um, you know, AI, AI writing and stuff, you can also go with these things. So. The important thing which I want to cover is, you know, we have, you know, what we have covered today is fine. Don't jump into any tool just because it's it's X, Y, Z. You know, you need to create your own framework, like how we have created it. That's why training courses that we do is there. Once you come in, understand, hey, what are the different possibilities? You continue to play with, with, with the LLMs that you have. Then you have enough. Then you create a process. This is what we thought April last year. I'm telling you again. April first week this year. Then you create a process. You're familiar with the LLM. You know how to engage with the LLM. Now you could say, hey, you know what? These are all the stuff that we do within the company right now. Why can't you do this little, little interventions with AI? And this is how we are going to use it. Create those little cheat sheets, templates and stuff. Then you just say, hey, you know what? I like this particular LLM. I want to look at LLM that's based on the anthropic, that's based on this, and I'm going to do that. You can actually go back and create a little test intents for Llama and others, and you could interact with them. Now, you could say, hey, I really like this, and now is there any tool available that's based on this API specific for writing? Then you build it, then you go for that. You have a lot more chances of success. So let me do a couple of uh, horror stories before I close this. Because you, what you won't find is, while well, it's all la 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 stories about AI, what you won't find is, is how things went amazingly wrong because you are being spoon fed or you are being told this is all great. It's not great. It's not always great. Let's put that way. It's not always great. So, at uh, a high level, you know, this is the amount of money that's spent by a big team. This is the number of bids that you're producing. And this is the average probability that they're winning. And this is the average margin that they are generating. All right. And approximate investment model. This is this is how we use to just, uh, if we are involved on the implementation, this is how we generally use. And now, if, uh, if the amount spent in your big team um, is actually, if I multiply all these things, then, my, oh my God, your big team is doing amazingly well. This is with or without AI, right? Your big team is generating at 10x time the value margin that for your company. If your big team is equal, uh, no, if you're spending $500,000 in your big team and you are winning and your overall margin is $500,000, I don't think the team exists. That's where you find restructuring. That's where you find people are letting go. And that's where you're going to find. And if you are in this uh, case, I'm sorry, and, and it's the other way around. <laughs> and, uh, and and if you are in this scenario, that's where things go bonkers. So let's see. This is these two are real examples, because the adoption rate adoption rate of many of the AI plugin tools on the first year. This is just the first year. Um, it's very high. But we we looked at one of the tool um, that is actually had a take up in the poll. Uh, that's not the generic tool. It's an it's it's one of your sponsored tool. Um, the adoption rate on the second year was only fourteen percent, which means they lost eighty six percent of their clients on the second year. So what that meant is they they rely on adopters who come in on the come in on the first one. They use it, so their old model will not be this. And you might be thinking why? Because while they bought the while they bought this thousand dollar a month, they never went and act actually um what were integrated imagine you know as it vendor will be very sticky on this right when we know so if you are configuring their ai with your llm then that's it you are stuck you are stuck with them but why are they losing nearly 80 percent of it because that never happens because it's all the tool it's all the same like a cloud or 20 dollars a month you just pay whether you use it or not it's not my problem so some companies, if you don't have the defined process, if you don't have enough training, if you don't have defined process, and if somebody within the company is telling you $1,000 a month, let's buy it, it's exciting, your team is scratching your head and saying, you know what, I have no idea how to use it. It's all technical jargon. 
you know, IT compliance, how, where do I start? So by the time, so you have to sit and do, these companies are not going to come and do and spend time with you because you are, you are just three license, five license, whereas they are sitting and doing 50 license for a bigger company. So this is the same story that's happened. This is the before the growth strategy, this company, very small, um, you start up, they're pumped in a lot of this. This is not just a big team. This is a whole marketing and sales team. They're pumped in. Uh, but, you know, first year they weren't making much. Then they say, hey, you know what? Let's grow aggressively. Let's do this. So they went and pumped up more, invested 150,000. Plus they included another 100,000 pounds. And then they just went on to say, hey, you know what? This is our plan. We are only doing 10, right? This year we're going to do 40. And, you know, we, we are going to now measure the time we spent on a bed. It's roughly 200 hours. And then the win rate, right? We were 30%. Now it's going to be amazing. It's going to be 55%, which meant our profit is going to be not this. Our profit is going to be not not 100,000 per bid, it's going to be a lot more. And we are going to make 6.6 .6 million happy days uh, from the loss that we had um, six months down the line. Um, yes, they spent this money. Obviously, this was poorly executed. Uh, the bids that they were did, they weren't able to do 40. They were only able to do 12.5. That's why the 25. Um, and then the average time, uh, they kept the same assumption. The win rate, they were happy that it didn't mess up. It was only 30%. They still kept it. The margin per bid only increased by 40,000, but they have already pumped up this cost, right? The important point is the quality of the response actually went low. The customer satisfaction went low. They still made the money, but look at the cost, right? This is the worst case scenario for you. This is the worst case scenario for you. Um, um, let's let's continue. So you have uh, you have this company pretty massive, um, you know, big team, a global team. They are doing this, and they're already making a cool cost per margin. You know, the cool cost per, per an overall thing. They just decided, hey, everybody is doing AI, right? We know we have to do it, and they did something horrible. Um, they didn't had an AI. They they had a bit process, but they don't know where to use AI. They invested heavily. They got forty seats, forty into thousand, forty thousand a month um, for their team uh, to spend on AI. Forty thousand to multiply by twelve, nearly five hundred thousand pounds was five hundred thousand dollars was spent on this. Bit quality went down. Bit probability went down. Customer satisfaction went down. Average time actually increased. And uh, instead of making six, 15 million, they actually lost and they made nine million. This is after spending five hundred thousand dollars. Many people left the company. So it's uh, it's not like you know the the overall investment of of you know it, it's not all gloom and amazing. You know, we need to spend some time learning, optimizing, and then investing because the cost is very high. You know, 0 0.002 might be good, but imagine you are not doing a short form article. You are doing a big, massive proposal before going AI. And, um, and that's it. So think it through carefully. And if, if you need any support on, on this, I'm happy to go through this. And finally, it's this. So... If you are in the UK, uh, there is an upskilling fund, AI upskilling fund. This is a government initiative. Um, so you can tap into this search for AI. So primarily, we are part of this at the moment. So you can log in and you could say, hey, you know what? I want to be part of this. And secondly, you know, which which training provider you want to go for? It's about you or something. Or pick up anybody. Or if you know us, you can add this. What the meant is your training will be funded. Totally funded. And, uh, and it's based on lottery. Uh, but at least you can cover your cost. And I'm sure there will be similar schemes in, in the US. If you have, let us know. I'm more than happy to tap into if we can get government funding to help you to do it. That's it. So um, just to wrap up, uh, you know, the training courses are there. Um, we are, we're coming back to it. And it's, it's, it's a beginner level for all geographies, as you know, from India to East Asia to Australia, New Zealand, USA, that is something. It's very basic. One day introducing you to what you can, what you can't do. And we are, we are pumped in a lot more days now. So March, April. So then you have what we call the uh, proposal mastery. 
um, you know, we we were planning. One of the company asked us whether we could do it for ten weeks. Uh, we 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 told them six week boot camp is already there. Why you need ten weeks? But we tried it, but <laughs> we won't try that again. So proposal mastery, as you know, is a five day intense program. This is a one day workshop, five days intense, and we have a six week boot camp. We are going to stick with that. You can come in and as and when we upload. We are also introducing implementation part of the boot camps now. Um, so uh, how how we can do the overall thing. Uh, and that's it. So if there is anything else, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will look into any questions into integrating the AI framework into your bit team. Is there any specific we can get the training? Yes, uh, I will come back to you on that, Sofian. So, uh, all right. Okay. Any questions? Let me know. So, primarily, you know, if 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 yes, we have trained many of you or anyone new, we can train it. Or if you want to just advise, Baska, we are already doing that. Where do you think we can do intervention? Don't go blindly because I'm using that process for my whole thing. And those guys are recommending me this tool. So that process, but this tool is going to be the amazing thing. Think it through, please, because it's not simple because one year, two years down the line, uh, it's 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 going to be pretty expensive. So think it through what you need and work through at least three years of what's the cost impact, team impact, success impact. Then make them accountable. Then you go for this. And any LLMs, again, custom-based, you know, API-based, um, what's good for you. And then we can configure the data, set up the search, and if you need any help on implementation, let me know. That's it. So that's me. So April 18th um, is, where, uh, is, is where we are going to reconvene again, and I'll focus more on Copilot. Because why Copilot? Because it's free. I won't say it's free, because most of us use Microsoft products. Um, and I'm sure the Google product comes up, we'll also do that. So you don't, do I actually need this AI writing if I'm going to do the same thing with Copilot? That's a question which I always pondered in my mind. And I, I would not, I will test as many tools as possible, but before I invest on a corporate scale or an enterprise level, I will think carefully before I do, because many of these tools, as I mentioned, as the year progresses, um, it, it will all be wide. And that's it. Uh, Scribble is there for you if you want to test it further and uh, any more. Uh, happy um, and have a great Easter holidays. But if anyone wants to stay, uh, there is a bit of an uh, APMP story which I want to share. <laughs> you can you can stay and listen. Otherwise, I wish you a happy Easter holidays. Thank you for joining. Good to see all of you. And anybody who want to see the recording, also happy Easter holidays. So thank you so much and wish you and your family all the best. Mm -hmm.